now be recorded. Um, we are a group, um, not all of us are here, but there's going to be 47 of us in this group. As you're aware, um, the first trip sold out immediately uh, before some of you were even able to get in on the trip. And, um, and so we put together another trip, identical trip for the fall of 2020, and that one sold out as well. Um, I'm, I'm really curious, uh, can't hear from everybody, but uh, we've never ever had that kind of response ever, not even close. Usually we say, hey, it's gonna be open to Cornwall people for a month and after a month, if there's space open, then we'll let people that don't go to Cornwall get in. And we usually have people from non-Cornwall people come in because there's still space after a month. And this one filled up so quick. I'm curious, um, I know you can't speak for everybody, but can any of you give me uh, some thoughts of why this, filled up and twice. Did it have to do with Egypt? Did it have to do with timing? Did it have to do with economy? Any thoughts at all on that? Just reputation. Every time yeah. a group comes back, I just sell it. Okay. And I'm going this time. Yeah. Instead of deciding. Okay. Yeah. We, we planned to go last time, but we got on the waiting list and never got uh, further. So we got a group early. We didn't like anything. We got in the second row. Uh, I tell you what, that was one of the best and worst nights of my of my life. At the same time, that was that was uh, anyway. But I'm grateful that, that. Okay, so so you had tried to go, wanted to go before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. Um, my friend uh, Grant over at CTK, they had their information meeting. I think two weeks ago tomorrow, um, and they filled up their trip in 20 minutes as well. And so he's looking at doing a possible second trip. Uh, so I think there's a lot of interest. Anyway, I'm excited for you. Um, let's have a word of prayer as we get started with this. Father, thank you so much uh, for your goodness to us. Lord, I thank you for this group. And we believe that your hand has been involved in putting this group together, uh, this team that will spend uh, two weeks together journeying, learning, growing, um, seeing, understanding. And um, so, Father, I pray that, that you would prepare us in these next months leading up to our trip. Uh, for what you have for us. God, I pray that uh, as we even tonight uh, go over some logistical details and in the future uh, go over some uh, deeper details that you would uh, even be doing your work before we ever even get to the Holy Land. Thank you for the fact that, that there is uh, archaeological proof that just corroborates the scripture and what a, what a beautiful thing that is to again solidify our faith and the confidence that we have in you being the truth. I pray this in your name. Amen. So here's what we're going to do over the next uh, 45, 50 minutes is we're going to cover a lot of logistical details. Uh, part of the reason for this is because if we don't do something like this for the next six months, people will be calling Suzanne. Hey, what about this? Hey, what about that? Hey, what about this? So I'm trying to preempt some of those calls. You still, call. you still can. But it's to answer some questions that you will have, some questions that you don't even know you have, but you will have, uh, and to clarify some things. And um, don't worry about taking notes because you will get everything I say um, on a piece of paper as you leave uh, tonight. And some of this you will hear me say again and again <laughs> and again. So just want to be clear on that. Um, but we're really, we're going to cover just a wide variety of, of logistical travel details. Some of you have done international travel. Some of you have not done international travel. Some of you have done group travel. Some of you have not done group travel. And international group travel has some uniqueness to it that uh, we just need to talk about. I think I may have mentioned this at the information meeting, that group travel is in a group. <laughs> and there are some benefits that you will receive by being in a group. And there's some downsides of being in a group. You just need to be aware. If you want to just go out and do this trip on your own uh, and not have a schedule and not have to be on the bus when I tell you to be on the bus and be able to stay wherever you want for as long as you want, then go ahead and, and we've got probably people that can fill the spot. Go ahead and sign off of this trip tonight. With that said, there are some things that you will not receive if you go by yourself that we will experience as a group. There are some things that we get to do, some things that we get to, places we get to go that you would not get to go and experience if you were by yourself. Beside the group dynamic of getting to know brothers and sisters, experiencing this together, making friendships, uh, those kind of things. So uh, with that said, let's get into some of the details. As you know, 
international trips like this require a passport. If you don't have one, I suggest you get started right away, uh, getting going on that. Uh, you have time. Here is something that you may want to consider. This is purely optional if you want to, if you don't already, but if you wanted to either get a Nexus Pass or a global entry, um, you can do that. And if you're interested in doing that, you don't have to. You hear me? This is optional. You, are we clear on that? You don't have to do this. What it means is when you come back into the United States, there's a lot quicker uh, process of getting through processing uh, your passporting and getting through that line quicker. If you had to choose between Nexus and global entry, I would suggest you go with Nexus because one, it's cheaper than getting the global entry. It has all of the benefits of global entry plus the Canadian Nexus Pass. And the reason most people do global entry, not Nexus, is because Nexus requires an interview and most people don't have as convenient as, as a location like Birch Bay for the interview that we do. So with that said, I entered into the Nexus option uh, plan and it took 10 weeks to get through the paperwork to get a, an interview um, set up. So my interview is June 18th. So I've been in this process for two or three months. So if you wanna do that, uh, I think it's, is it $50? If you wanna do that, I would say get going on that right away. I will say this other little piece on this, uh, Grant told me this, uh, Grant and his wife Laurel are uh, originally Canadians. They have now uh, dual citizenship, I believe. But when Laurel went to get hers, on the application when it says, what aliases have you ever gone by? She didn't put anything down. So when they went for the interview, they asked her, have you always been fish book? And she said, well, no, it's not my maiden name. And they said, we wanted aliases. She said, it wasn't an alias. She said, it's a name you went by other than fish book. Yes, you're dismissed. She had to reschedule the whole thing. So if you're uh, got, you know, Jimmy Buckaroo, whatever you got, whatever alias might be out there, a maiden name or whatever it might have been, make sure you include that for especially uh, ladies with maiden names. Okay, enough of that. Let's move on. Um, there's uh, three payments. The next one comes up on June 28th, then August 30th, then October 31st. I want to repeat this again. It'll be on your sheet. Make your checks payable to Imagine Tours, not to Cornwall Church, not to Suzanne Skurjank, to Imagine Tours. With that, you can mail the, church, the, the check to the church in an envelope, not a tithe envelope. And, and I'm, I'm saying this because we have people do this, and it doesn't go through our books here. In a regular envelope, it can go to Cornwall Church, attention to Suzanne Skurjank. All this is written down. Don't use a tithe envelope. Write the checks to Imagine Tours, all right? Um, and uh, you can also, if you want to, drop it off at the church office. Um, I, One side note, on October 31st, that's your final payment. I'll also need, for those that haven't given that to me yet, a copy of your passport. So you can give that to me anytime, but I will need it by October 31st. That's not on their sheet, is it? No, I just thought of that. I meant to, and then... Okay, now you can take yeah. notes. So those, those are the yeah, payments okay. on that. Also, on that last payment, um, because you all obviously got through the deadline, that is minus the $100 discount. Okay. And if you, some of you are single supplement, single room supplement, is that's in that last uh, payment as well. Um, Questions that people often ask, are there any required shots or immunizations? Nothing is required. Uh, we're not going into a malaria zone. We're not going into a yellow fever zone. So nothing like that is required. Uh, we highly recommend your, your tetanus be up to date, but that's just common sense, I would think. But that's, so no, no immunizations. Um, let's talk about luggage. You see, I've got some things up here. Um, let's talk a little bit about luggage. You are each allowed to take one checked bag. I, I'm sorry for treating you like kindergartners. How many checked bags are you, are you each allowed to take? One. What if the airline says you can take two? How many are you allowed to take? One. That's right. What do you say? I'm willing to pay the extra baggage fees for more than one. How many are you allowed to take? One. Yeah. Let me tell you why. One, you don't need more than one suitcase. All right. The other thing is 
there's only so much room under the bus. So even if even if the airline says yes, or even if you say, well, the extra, we don't have room for that under the bus. So you can have one. The airline will allow that suitcase to be up to 50 pounds. It's a fair amount of, of stuff. You will see on your sheet when you get that case has maximum 62 linear inch uh, measurement. Let me explain this because people always ask, what is 62 linear inches? Well, you measure, including the suitcase, and you write that number down. And then you measure how uh, deep is your suitcase, and you write that number down. And you measure how wide is your suitcase, and you write that number down. And you add all three numbers up. If the number comes up under 62, oh, you're good to go. If you're like, well, but it's 73, and eh, wrong suitcase, get a different one, okay? So that uh, that is by the uh, airline's standards. The also thing, you'll also be allowed to bring a carry-on. Um, let me just put this here, because I want to make sure people see. Here's a suitcase, but this is a small suitcase. Or some of you say, oh, this is a carry-on that the airlines will allow. You're correct. This is not the carry-on you are bringing. You understand? This is not acceptable as your carry-on. Unless you're saying, well, I don't, I don't need a check bag. I'll just bring this. Then that's fine. But you're not bringing this and this. Here's the reason. On the bus, regardless of what happens on the plane, the overhead compartment is not big enough for this to fit, and we don't have enough room underneath the bus for you to have this and this. So your carry-on might look a little more like this, a backpack or something similar, a duffel bag, something, something like that. Not this. We good? <laughs> That's not allowed. This good? In addition to that, you can have a, a camera case, a purse, uh, maybe a small laptop bag like that. I just want to make sure we're clear because once we get there, you say, well, I, I, I thought this would fit. It's not going to be any fun to have that sitting on your lap uh, for, for two weeks. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we will run it over and then it will flatten out and then it might fit. Uh, absolutely. Um, okay. So space is limited on that. A couple things when it comes to your suitcase. This is just a little life hack, life travel hacks. Before you leave, take a picture of your suitcase because in the unlikely event that something would happen to your luggage and they say, well, what kind of suitcase was it? What describe it? And you're like, well, I think it was kind of a uh, rectangle, um, grayish green, kind of brown blue. Um, take a picture. That way you say, here's a picture of it. You got the description down. We will also have um, some, some bright strap that you will, we will have you put on your suitcase. You say, well, that doesn't match then. <laughs> we don't care. Here's the reason for that. When we get to Tel Aviv or when we're at a hotel and there's hundreds and maybe thousands of suitcases, we say all the ones with the pink strap, all the ones with the green strap, that's our group. So for instance, we get to Tel Aviv, some people get through right away. They can go to the carousel, just start pulling all the bags. They don't have to look at the tech because it'll all be marked with the strap. So we'll give that and uh, and you'll have that on because in hotels, when there's multiple groups leaving and there's bags everywhere, it's just helpful. So uh, we'll provide that for you. Um, we'll go with that. Uh, packing. A couple things. If you haven't done a lot of uh, this kind of travel and you're not sure how to pack, uh, Rick Steves has a lot of tips. You can go on to ricksteves.com. Uh, some people love him. Some people hate him. But he's just got some packing tips. Uh, there um, some things we're going to talk about here. There's no need to buy everything uh, that you might want to take. And what I mean by that is there might be stuff that a friend or a brother or a relative or someone in your small group has and says, hey, you know, you could, you could borrow this. That way you don't have to go buy a bunch of new stuff. So I would recommend that you, you do that kind of thing. With the one suitcase traveling uh, limitation, um, it's okay in the two weeks to wear the same shirt more than once, same pants more than once. It's okay. We, don't worry, we're not all keeping track and we're going, oh, look, she wore that again. <laughs> I would encourage you 
to um, to bring clothing that's easy to wash and hang dry, wash and wear, uh, real quick uh, drying stuff. Um, there are some places that you can send out your laundry to be done, but what is more convenient for most things is to wash it in the sink or the bathtub, hang it up in the bathroom, and then let it dry. But there's some things that are more conducive to that than others. Heavy, heavy uh, cotton jeans, for instance, take forever to dry. Um, but something that's nylon or something that's a, a dry fit, uh, athletic type stuff. Uh, so I would recommend that kind of thing. And with that, I would recommend uh, bringing little, whether it's tied packets or basic H or whatever. I don't know what you guys take, you know, but to, to do your laundry. That's what I'm talking about. The soap and stuff. So shampoo. Can you use shampoo? I don't care. Um, I, I always tell this story. Um, the first trip we took with uh, Cornwall, my dad took a trip and he, cause he had done this for years. And so he said, Bob, you take a trip, I'll take a trip, I'll teach you the ropes. So I was in his, <laughs> I went up to see him, uh, he and my mom up in their room one night after our day of touring. Mom says, oh, dad's in the bathroom going in there and talk with him. He was in the bathtub uh, with all of, in his underwear, with all of his clothes in there kind of swishing around. <laughs> he said, he said, this is the best way to do laundry. So, <laughs> so, so he, he was the agitator and in there doing all that and then he rinsed it out. So anyway, uh, you have my dad to thank for that. Um, again, one thing that you might want to think about um, if you on a long flight. Um, I some people have this issue. I have an issue, for instance, my feet and ankles swell. I've got great circulation, but on long, long flights, my feet and ankles swell. So I wear compression socks. Um, and if you don't, you can get them at any uh, running store or drug store. There's a thing called Ames Walker. It's an online deal. They've got great prices, a lot of great things. Also, if you've ever had any issues with uh, deep vein thrombosis, be sure you talk with your doctor, okay, on that. Um, and I'm sure that they, they will give you some, some wise counsel on that. There are times when we are in holy places where, uh, for instance, sleeveless shirts would not be allowed. Uh, tank tops would not be allowed. Shorts would not be allowed. On those kind of places, and we'll always let you know. Like we might, one night we get back to the hotel and say, hey, tomorrow, your shorts and tank tops are fine. That's good. Or we'll say, hey, tomorrow we are going to be visiting this. So uh, the general rule is, ladies uh, and guys, your knees need to be covered. So at least have um, capris um, or uh, guys, uh, a great option is those pants that the legs zip on and off. An even quicker option is a, a really uh, thin, like, sweatpants shell that you just pull up over your shorts and just put them on and go. Uh, ladies, um, I'm going to destroy this again. Okay, it's just like this skirt. I called it an A-frame last time. This skirt that's got <laughs> elastic in What's it called? Peasant skirt. You guys don't know what a peasant skirt is? Okay, so... Peasant skirt, that's a great easy option. You just kind of pull it on and then your knees covered. Shoulders, same way. Um, when we were on the Temple Mount last time, they gave to people that they felt like didn't take enough precautions, they gave wraps to, to cover their, I their to shoulders. Cover my elbows because to cover uh, parts of them. That's that's a, that's a, <laughs> um, it was a it was a, a Muslim a Muslim holy site and they did not want um flesh exposed and so their uh standard was even higher and so uh with that there will be places if you're not appropriately covered and we'll let you know when those days are those places are they won't allow you in okay so, long sleeve. uh actually for guys a short sleeve is fine this would be okay yep is, yep okay. yeah but but not shorts in holy places so okay and and at uh at least at the uh the western wall you'll need to cover your head but they give out these little yarmulkes, and so yeah, they're fun. All right, um, okay. We do a lot of walking. Did I mention that at the information meeting? Mm -hmm. Let me mention it again. We do a lot of walking. There's a lot of walking. If you've not been walking, start walking. Put together a walking regimen. We do a lot of walking. <laughs> we do a fair amount of walking. Also, have your good walking shoes broken in well before we leave. Don't come on this trip with a brand new pair of shoes I got, and I'm going to break them in in the Holy Land. You're going to have a lot of blisters, and it's going to be miserable. Get those broken in uh, before before we go. Get those walking shoes. Um, very often 
in the evenings, it's cool. Uh, some parts more than others. In Jerusalem, is a little bit higher elevation. Uh, a little windbreaker or a jacket or a sweater might be a good thing to layer up. One of the things um, with travel that comes up all the time is electricity. And I wanted to talk about, um, and these are the kind of things where if you can borrow, it, it's helpful. There's a, a, a difference between an adapter and a converter. Adapters basically take this kind of a prong and you can plug something into it, all right? Uh, adapters are just, just plugging into the wall and you can, you know, it's got a USB port, it's got a place where you can plug in it. Those are adapters. Converters are different. Converters take the 220 and make it into 110. So you say, well, what do I need? Well, that depends. Um, if you have any, most electronics now, all you need is the adapter, all right? Um, if you bring a blow dryer, you need a converter. Otherwise, you're going to, whatever, black out the, the whatever. Yeah, really good. And then that nice smell of singed hair and burnout elements is, is wonderful. If you want to bring like a, 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 an arc welder, um, just don't. But if you want to bring a, a blow dryer, you'll need the converter. Converters are more expensive than adapters. And if you say, well, how do I know? One of the ways you can tell is just the weight of it. Adapters are real, real lightweight. Just now, again, this is the kind of thing where adapter, these little guys, I don't use the term a dime a dozen, but they're really, really expensive like this for eight or nine bucks. A converter is probably costing more than the $40. Okay. So, yeah. Any voltage? Of what is the correct plug? Like when you have about 10? Yeah. 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 So these will be up here after you can take a look. What's that? Yeah. I went my own out of a corner. And uh, they won't let me in some of those hotels anymore. I'm just kidding. Don't don't try to make your own. Yeah. So many hotels have hair dryers that go kind of like this. It takes forever for me. So, yeah, yeah. So, yes, some of them do. Yeah, and for many of you, that would be adequate. Uh, John, you had a question? Yeah, uh, what would you say how many miles a day are we We're going to train. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, four to six, probably. But some of it is on uneven stuff, cobblestones up and down. Train on just, just, just train. Yeah, yeah, just train. Okay. Um, one of the options that you have is to walk through Hezekiah's Tunnel. To me, it's one of my one of my favorite parts of the trip. If you choose to walk through Hezekiah's Tunnel, there's two things you're going to need. One is some um, some footwear that can get wet. For instance, like like these kind of a sandal or, or or even an old pair of tennis shoes that you say I'm taking them I'm going to wear them and then I'm going to toss them or because they're not going to dry out something on your feet that can get wet and you'll need uh, some um, a lamp of some sort now again what I always use is, is like a you know like a headlamp like one of my running headlamps that kind of thing but again I don't want you to feel like you have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff for a a one hour piece of the trip. I mean, the reality is you could take you could take a light like this and be okay with it. Um, we'll talk more about this test tunnel. If you're not overly claustrophobic, it's a cool experience. Part of it is just how old the thing is and how they built it 700 years ago or whatever it was. Um, it has a day. So there's, there's that. When we go to Hezekiah's tunnel, there's also a dry tunnel option. Uh, the Canaanite tunnel. So you, if you say, I don't want to do all that stuff, there is another option uh, with that as well. Um, weather, the time that we are going is very mild. It's very nice up in Tiberias. Um, highs uh, will be in the 60s, maybe low 70s, lows in the 50s. The Dead Sea will be a little warmer, probably in the 70s. Occasionally it might hit 80, but uh, Jerusalem's a little higher, so it's be a little cooler um, in the high 50s, low 60s, and at night it's down maybe even into the 40s. 
and then in Egypt, it's going to be a little warmer, probably in the mid-70s um, when we get into Cairo. There at altitude as well. There's your pretty cool website. Punch it in, it just pulls up the temperature. Now, it doesn't help us out a lot now because it gives the temperature. Uh, all these things, you know, Dead Sea, Tiberias, Jerusalem, like five or six places in, in it. But also, if you on that website, it's the wall of the Sea of Galilee. And we'll get into that this fall of why that's important and why that's significant. But you can kind of watch, oh, wow, they must have had rains because the pool been a wow, it's going down. It's kind of just, for those of you who are into that kind of stuff. Um, the carry-on that you're bringing on the plane, here's some things that you need to think about. In this Again, uh, you'll, you'll get all this. We had, in, this will be our seventh trip. In six trips, we've had one suitcase. Only one suitcase. The individual who lost had that suitcase lost. She didn't lose it. The airlines lost it. She not packed extra clothes on, and her suitcase didn't catch up for four days. She was miserable. So you don't have to overpack, but it's a good idea in your carry-on to have a, a couple, of, maybe an extra shirt, an extra pair of underwear, your toiletries, all your medications that you need. Have them in there. Because if you're like, I need this medication and my suitcase is lost, well, you, that's not a good thing. Have all your medication, your carry-on, your money in your carry-on, those kind of things. You want that uh, toiletries, did I say that? A another thing, again, this is optional, but man, it, on these kind of long rides, it, it, this is a godsend. Traveled with uh, noise-canceling headphones. They are a gift from God above. Um, now... <laughs> They're not cheap, and this is one of those things if you're like, I'm not going to do a whole lot of traveling. Find someone you can borrow some from. because they, I mean, they range anywhere from 100 to about $400, so it depends on what you want to pay for them. But when you're on a plane for 12 hours and there's this low rumble that just constant, it, to have those is amazing. So something you may want to think about, or you may want to ask for for Christmas, birthday, uh, St. Patrick's Day, all those put together. Uh, if you have motions, Sickness uh, issues, maybe talk to your doctor. There's this thing called scopolamine. Did I say that right? Scop scopolamine. I don't get motion sickness. My mom, you go like this and she throws up. But she swears.